bugs, got little the bugs all the way to infinite. Oh, there ain't no bugs on me. Ain't no bugs <laughs> well, on me. I'm happy to say that I've never seen a bed bug, but uh you hear the headlines everywhere. She woke up to a few uninvited guests in her room in the Hampton Manor Hotel. Bed bugs. It itches. It hurts. It's gross. And every time I go to a hotel now, I'm really always freaking out. Anyway, Cindy Dole here, Home Wizards, where we're all about helping you improve your home and your life. And that certainly means make sure that those bed bugs aren't getting you. No way. But uh, with me is a guy who knows all about it. And I thought that we would get smarter on how do you know if they are coming to your home and how do you get them out and keep them away? So welcome Adam Greenberg, the founder of a website called usbedbugs.com. Well, thanks for having me. Hi, Adam. Um, how did you decide that you wanted to learn more about bed bugs? Um, about six years ago, I have a home medical supply company and customers started calling us from all over the country, especially on the East Coast, asking us for solutions for bed bugs. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, there was very little uh, products on the market, even the exterminators uh, knew little what to do uh, with bed bugs, so it's something that I kind of, uh, you know, took to heart and wanted to investigate and see what the problem was. Uh, and when I, the, the more you, the more you uh, look and learn, the, the more you're kind of scared and, and want to yeah. know more. Um, so I took it upon myself as a mission to find out what we can do about bed bugs and to. Uh, bring the latest solutions to to our customers. I mean, it's really kind of scary because the headlines are everywhere. They're saying that the infestations are at their worst since the 40s and that people are going to the hospital for being bitten by these things and that that's on the rise. I mean, it isn't all hype, is it? No, it, it's, it's definitely not all hype. Um, you know, years ago, you can't go more than about three months without realizing you have a, a pretty bad bed bug problem. So it's not like People had bed bugs and just didn't realize it. That's that's not the case. It is something that's been growing now for almost 15 years in in the United States. Mm -hmm. Um, It started first in kind of the port cities of San Francisco, New York, Toronto, uh, Washington, D.C., and uh, it's been spreading very rapidly. Um, Mm. They go undetected very well. So it's it's something that we do need to take precautions. Um, But uh, there's a lot of easy answers out there. Um, Once people get a little bit educated about what bed bugs are, um, what they can do about it, how to detect them early. Um, there's a lot we can do to get, get control of bed bugs. We just need to get that education out. Good, and that, that's why I'm glad you're here. And I guess August, I understand, June, July, August, that is when most of the hospital visits uh, occur because of the bed bug problem. And so this is kind of like the peak season for these guys. Yeah, it's definitely uh, summer and into early fall. Um, bed bugs are definitely a little bit more active in the summertime. They're indoor pests, so... The weather doesn't typically bother them too much, but the more there is heat and humidity, the more they're going to be more active and wanting to feed more often. You did say they're indoor pests, not pets. <laughs> That's right. You know, but, but I understand that they can also get on your dogs and cats and make them sick. They can. I mean, as your problem gets, uh, continues to grow, and they do multiply pretty quickly, uh-huh. um, we're talking yes. one bed bug that's pregnant can go to 30,000 possibly in six So it's like fleas. So it's, it's terrible. Well, so it. let's first start out. What, I mean, what does a bed bug look like? I, I've looked at some of the pictures you guys sent me. I mean, you've really zoomed in yeah. to what is a, a small little critter. I mean, how could I see it on my hand? Sure. An adult bed bug is about the size of an apple seed. Uh-huh. So uh, it's, it's about very similar in color, uh, a lightish, a darkish brown, reddish color. Um, you'd have to look at it very closely uh, in order to see the legs and the head and that it was actually uh, a pest. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of times people don't even realize it. So it's kind of, is it smaller than a flea? No, uh, uh, an adult bed bug is, is larger than a flea. Larger about, than a flea. It's, it's about tick size. Tick size. Okay, yeah. that's so, but that's, I guess you could really see it then because ticks you can see pretty clearly. They could. The problem with bed bugs is they, they typically only come out late at night when it's very dark and you're oh, usually asleep. So that's creepy. Yeah, so, um, now, there are different sizes as they're growing from babies. The babies are one millimeter in length and clear. You're not going to see them. You could if you had a magnifying glass, but you're just not going to see them because they're small. So yeah. they do grow as they, get, as they get larger and become an adult. Um, but yet they do hide so well, as I said. So that's that's the main problem. So how do you sleep at night? I mean, uh, I guess <laughs> um, I do. I do itch quite a bit, but you know, I uh, I do take precautions. I uh-huh. monitor my home very carefully. I do travel quite a bit, so um, you know, I have uh, kids that go away to camp and school, and and uh, it's not that I would ever stop them from doing these types of things um, because of bed bugs, but we do take precautions. So the bed bug comes out at night. So then during the day, where is it hanging out? It's usually um, 
in the furniture, hidden very well. It doesn't like the light, and it doesn't want to be disturbed. So it could be, it's going to be somewhere near the bed or wherever the person uh, is sleeping. So the most common area is underneath the box spring, and then anywhere around the bed uh, would be second. So behind the headboard, maybe even under the wall boards right next to the bed, in a nightstand. Um, dresser drawers is a very common area. Furniture where they have cracks and crevices to hide, that's going to be very uh, attractive for them. So they're not moving about during the day. They, they feed for about 5 to 10 minutes at night. Then they go lay their eggs, and then they're dormant for the other 23 and a half plus hours a day. And so. when you say they feed, you mean they feed on me, I mean, yeah. on you. They, yeah. They're not just feeding, you know, in your pantry. <laughs> That's right. It's kind of like a cross between a mosquito and a tick. But Ick. They, they, the good news is they don't jump and they don't fly. So if you see anything that's got wings and it's moving about, then that's definitely not a bed bug. Uh, oh, and they don't jump. Well, that's good. Right. And you mentioned um, a magnifying glass. Is this something that we should keep around in our bedroom looking for the bed bug? Um, you could. I mean, I definitely bring one with me when I travel. Uh -huh. um, you know, I'm very carefully inspect a hotel room uh, whenever I travel. I, I'm always freaked out about the bedspreads, you know what I mean, when they have yeah. that. Like, who else has used that same power? And are they really cleaning that bedspread? Right. Unfortunately, when you do lift the mattress up and look underneath, a lot of times you find, you know, uh, kind of disgusting things that you'd rather not notice. Mm -hmm. But if you're seeing spots that the bed bugs leave behind or even possibly bed bugs, which I found a couple of times, um, then, you know, you want to you don't want to panic. So the, re the magnifying glass says, hey, I found a brown spot. Is it actually a bug, first of all? And then is it what kind of bug is it? So it gives you some clue that you're not complaining over a uh, crumb or some other fuzz, carpet fuzz, um, you know, for no reason. So you, you will need to have some sort of magnification to determine what it is. A lot of people say, hey, I found something, not sure what it is, I, but I'd rather just let, let the hotel know, have them come inspect it um, at their leisure and give me another room while they go ahead and do that. So I, bet get, I bet they get kind of defensive, you know what I mean, because this hurts their business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and usually the front desk staff is not very educated as to how uh, common the bed bugs are spreading in their hotel because you'll report it to the front desk, but then they have a housekeeping staff that brings in an exterminator, and there's not, they're not always closing that loop. And a lot of the times the housekeeping staff is finding it even before the guests are, which is good news for, for guests that they're finding it very quickly, and they don't usually go ahead and up, you know, tell the front desk staff Every time there's a problem, they just quietly take care of it and go uh -huh. about their business. So it is, it's something that the hotels are doing a lot better job, uh, I would say, the last two years, um, getting control of it. And it, it took a lot of education and training for their staff. And mm -hmm. these, are, these are the same types of uh, measures that you can use at your home. So when you come back from a trip, but probably a week to 10 days later is when you'd want to do an inspection um, to look for the signs of bed bugs, and there's different uh, monitors and devices that can help you. Yeah, do that. and we're going to talk about all that. I love that you have all these different methods. And in terms of the the whole hotel connection with our home, we've talked about this before here on the show. There's something about the suitcase, right? We put the suitcase on the bed in the hotel, right. and then that becomes, well, I guess the transportation method for the bed bug to then come back with us, take That's a little free ride. That's right, exactly. They're excellent hitchhikers. Um, and the material of most suitcases is very attractive for bed bugs to crawl into. There's lots of seams where they can they can hide. Um, they're not specifically looking for your suitcase. I mean, what about a la like a laptop? Yeah, a laptop. Case. And and some people even believe that the heat from the laptop and the body oils on it could be a little bit of an attractant for the yeah. bed bugs. So, yeah. Um, yeah, anything you leave out in the middle of the night when they're on the move could bring a bed bug home, and they're very thin, so they can crawl into any, any piece of electronics. So. Oh, it doesn't matter if they're on the bed. I mean, if, you, if, like if, if you're on the hotel and you haven't put your suitcase on the bed, but you still put it on the floor or on that handy little chair and table set they have, yeah. the bed bug can still come home with you, right? Absolutely. Oh, geez. <laughs> and, I mean, they, can, they can crawl up to 30 feet, um, ah! and, uh, and they do sometimes scatter. The females uh, will go away from the bed as they want to lay their eggs. Okay, well, this yeah. is kind of a sick, uh, creepy fetish that we have because we want to know more about the bed bugs so they don't bite and get us. So don't go away, Adam. Adam Greenberg is the founder of this uh, very helpful website called usbedbugs.com as we transition into Hour 2. Uh, after we hear a little bit more about the uh, news, we're going to come back here on Home Wizards and discover ways to stop the bed bug from getting the best of you in your home. Home Wizards, Cindy Dole, let's kick it up a notch. Of you. And now well, hi 
there, Cindy Dole. Hour two of Home Wizards, where we love helping you improve the spaces that you call home. We call it home improvement and life improvement. And so glad you're hanging out with me this Saturday. We're here every Saturday from 2 to 4, you know, so if you missed the first hour, where were you? We want you to hang out with us. And by the way, as you do listen and you go, I wish I could hear that again, no worries. You can always go to the website, uh, cindydole.com, right there in the on-air section. Uh, all the past shows are there where you can listen through uh, the website, have podcasts. You can download them to your computer. And also we have the app for that. If you take your iPhone or your Android phone with the barcode and wave it across the front of my website there, you can instantly take all of the shows with you on the road. So how cool is that? 888-KFWB980 is the number you might just want to keep handy if you're itching and scratching a lot for no particular reason. This is kind of creepy, but here are some of the facts. Are you ready for this? We're talking about bed bugs. And now you're ready for the room that might smell like raspberries, almonds, and moldy shoes. That might mean that you have bed bugs. Or how about this? That since the 1930s, well, in the 1930s, one in four British homes was infested, but now they're saying it's the worst here in the U.S. Since the 40s, we have a real bed bug problem, and let's get to the bottom of it. Was a bug, little bug. Well, that guy makes the bug sound so cute, but the bed bug is really kind of gross. I haven't seen one, thankfully. I don't know if you have. Maybe you have. Let me know. I, I mean, they're kind of small. They're about the size of an apple seed, as we were just getting to know about the bed bug that likes to hide out during the day, maybe in your nightstand or in the carpeting, somewhere where there's crevices. And then it comes out in the middle of the night, and it'll start munching and crunching on you, and all of a sudden, you wake up with some bad itches. And with me is a guy who knows all about it, Adam Greenberg, the founder of a website called usbedbugs.com. So, Adam, tell me, how does the bed bug bite differ from, let's say, the mosquito, uh, the spider, the flea bite? How does it feel different? How does it look different? Um, it's actually going to be very similar, which is why you, you really can't take bites to a doctor or a hospital, and they cannot definit definitively diagnose uh, what pests you have just based on the bites. Oh, my gosh. And everybody reacts totally different. In fact, more than half of the people uh, uh, in the United States do not even react to bed bug bites um, right away. So you may be getting bitten and have no idea. It's very common that a husband and wife, only one person is getting bitten, and the other will be getting bitten but not showing the actual bites. So mm. that's one reason why it can delay the diagnosis is people are confused, thinking that everybody's going to be showing the, the bites if it were bed bugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And does a bed bug typically bite multiple times? Yes. On average, you, uh, you see two to three bites in a row, kind of on the, in a line, like on a, on a vein. They are, they are trying to draw blood. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, you know, some people describe that as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Ew. And it's it's not that they're doing three bites on purpose. It's just if you twitch or, or, or move at all, they will, they will pause for a moment um, and wait for you to be still again. So that's why, on average, it takes about three times for them to get, get their full meal. Mm. And, and that meal is, what, seven times their own weight in our blood. Right. That's, isn't that cute and attractive? And so it's true that you can actually smell that bed bugs are in your room, that the whole raspberry almond thing? Um. You know, it would have to be a very bad problem for humans to smell them. The mm -hmm. dogs uh, that are trained to yes. sniff out the bed bugs can yeah. certainly smell them a lot easier, easier than we can. Right. Um, right. And so that blood smell that you, you might smell is also in, in a hotel room. A lot of times it's, it's coupled with uh, a smell of the pesticide that you might notice that they're using or powders that they're putting around the bed. So sometimes that can be an early indica indication as well. Okay. Well, we're going to get to some of the how do you get rid of them part, but first, how do you prevent them? I mean, it sounds like you want to have the magnifying glass to kind of take an inventory of how your room is right now if, if, the, if these bed bugs are hiding out during the day, right? Right. And yeah, I mean, uh, whenever you go outside your home, you're, you're at risk of catching bed bugs, and there's not a whole lot you can do in general uh -huh. to avoid them. They could be on the bus, uh, you know, or at your workplace, anywhere. So um, there's no 100% cure for preventing bed bugs. But what you can do is take precautions. So when you're staying in a, in a room that, that you're sleeping in outside the home, like a hotel or a hospital or even a grandma's apartment, you can keep all of your items bagged up, uh, zipped up in some sort of plastic bag that they cannot crawl into. Therefore, you're eliminating the way that they're hitchhiking home with you by keeping all your, your items zipped up. And there's a couple different uh, options out there. There's uh, large Ziploc bags, even garbage bags. Uh, we have a product called the Bug Zip Bag that goes around your whole suitcase. 
Um, it's the only bag out there that can fit an item large enough uh, like a suitcase, and you can just live out of it. Instead of unpacking into the drawers, you live out of your suitcase oh, geez. In, a, in an exterior zipped bag, and therefore you're just literally locking them out so they can't come home with you. I've heard, too, that if you, if you are nervous about it, and after you've been to a hotel, if you bring your suitcase, and instead of bringing it inside your home, you, you either take it to your garage or even on your driveway, and something about the daylight, or covering it in a big, black, large, trash plastic bag, that that might kill the bed bugs. Well, a couple things there. Any bag around, uh, around it, if there's bed bugs in the suitcase, it's not likely to kill them. Mm. Um, so that's a little bit of a myth, uh, of a myth uh, regarding bed bugs. But it's true, you do not want to bring your suitcases back in the, in the room just because you're giving them easy access near your bedroom. So I absolutely recommend you keep your suitcase out in the garage and bring your, your clothing in in, a, in some sort of garbage bag um, type, type bag. We also have dissolvable laundry bags that you can take a load at a time right into the washing machine to, to launder them or right into the dryer. Um, it's really the heat of the dryer that's going to kill yeah. any bed bugs and even their eggs, and it only takes about 10 minutes in the dryer. So to the kill sunlight, bed bugs. the sunlight's not a solution just to put your suitcase out in the sun? No, because they'll crawl inside out of the sun, and uh, it's not going to get consistently hot enough typically in a suitcase um, to, to kill them. So, um, in fact, it's the, a bag around it can be a little bit of an insulator, and it can, can prolong their, their life. So... But if they're outside, they're not, you know, they're, they're, just, they're not going to find their way into your home typically. So, um, you know, keeping your bag out in the garage um, is helpful. Now, if you wanted to put a bag around your suitcase to prevent, uh, if it's a common storage area, uh, especially in an apartment building, then you're preventing other people's bed bugs getting into your, your luggage and belongings. So, or in a storage uh, facility where you're renting a space and, uh, the, and people are storing their furniture in the units next to you, again, you'd want to keep... Uh, certain items bagged up or protected, so you that know, this is kind of in. feeling like paranoia, though. I mean, I know we, we you know, we don't want to get bitten, but boy, this feels like a lot of extra steps we've got to do. These guys are inconvenient. <laughs> yeah, they are. But you know, I've talked to hundreds, if not thousands, of people that have actually dealt with bed bugs in yeah, their home, yeah. and most of them are crying. Yeah, um, it's really uh, a problem that you just never want to go through. Yeah, um, it's uh, you know, even though even if it doesn't cause serious medical problems, it's the lost sleep for months, never sure. knowing if they're really gone. The constant washing, not trusting if your exterminator is you know is overcharging you for services you may not actually need. Mm. It's a lot of uh, indec- indecision, a lot of uh, uh, inconvenience in somebody in people's lives, and uh, some trauma too. I bet, and people probably are just almost you know afraid to sleep. You That's know? right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, all right, let's talk about some of the methods to get rid of them, which you have tons um, of different products and from all different brands uh, on your website. Um, and you mentioned uh, exterminators. Are, these are things, the products that you're showing from all around the world um, are things that we would apply ourselves as opposed to having a professional? No, I would say in combination. Combination, um, okay. There's a lot of things you can do to cut down your, your bill from the exterminator and to help uh, get, get a jump on, on solving your bed bug problem at home. And we have lots of devices. A lot of them are centered around heat. Heat is one of the safest, greenest ways to kill bed bugs. So it doesn't always have to be a chemical is what you're no, saying. No, absolutely not. And if it's caught early enough, you may not even need chemicals, and the exterminator may not even use uh, chemicals in most cases. But um, it's really a combination. Uh, uh, we say it's not a do-it-yourself problem. You are going to need an exterminator to come out here, come out to your place, do a final check. They may lay some chemicals down in a very small, targeted way where they know there could be a problem, um, which is going to be completely different than you going to the store and buying a jug full of powder or spray and putting it all over your bedroom and causing all sorts of allergies and, and, and mm-hmm. risks. So, But you also have some other things. Let's talk about it. You have just a couple minutes. You have a, a dry vapor, steam cleaners. You have uh, what are uh, some bug zip luggage encasements. What are some of the things that you think that we should look at? Yeah, uh, the steamer is great. Uh, again, it's putting off steam. That's just killing the bed bugs with heat. So if you believe they're around your bed, you can use the steamer. It's similar like you'd use in the shower to clean mold, um, and it just gets hot enough to kill the bed bugs uh, around your furniture. So you don't have to throw away your mattress or your nightstand. You can literally just steam them out, and you don't have to replace them. The heat's going to kill the bed bugs. And I'm seeing on your website, it looks like a rat trap. Is that a bed bug trap? Uh, there are bed bug traps. There's quite a few, and they, uh, some of them go under the feet of your bed. So as they try to crawl on, they'll get stuck in these traps and won't be able to reach the bed. Um, so it's going to prevent you from getting bitten. And secondly, as, as you check the traps once every week or every two weeks, you would actually catch the bed bugs to know if you had a problem or if they were, had come back from a neighboring uh, unit and so forth. Uh, there's also a heater called the Pactite. It's about the size of a very large suitcase, and you can throw all of your books, 
and toys and purses and bags, anything you can't throw in a dryer, you can put inside this portable heater, close it, turn it on, and it bakes the items uh, for about, takes about two hours to run it, and you're literally just debugging all of your items with heat. Um, anything that you didn't, you thought would get ruined in the dryer, you can kill with this portable heater. So um, that can, call, you know, prevent you from having to replace a lot of your personal items. Okay. Um, and cut down the cost. Well, thank you so much. You had some great advice. Adam Greenberg, founder of the website. Check him out, usbedbugs.com. And we'll have you also on my website at cindydole.com. Adam, thank you. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to get sleep tonight, but I'm, I feel smarter. <laughs> great having you on, okay? Thanks for having us. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk about outdoor living and some great ways to make it look cool as we're enjoying this summertime with a very fun interior designer. Home Wizard Cindy Dole here. Don't you go away because we're just getting started here on KFWB News Talk 980. Where there's nothing but sweet surroundings.